right, James chapter 2. I was going to do, this was going to be a summer series, and it has been, but I'm in James chapter 2. <laughs> school starts back, what, the 10th of August? So we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna finish James because it touches so many different things. It's almost like different series in this book of James, and it's, it's, you, you, have to, you have to take it slow. You have to take it like a surgeon, and you have to cut things away. And so that's what we've been doing with the book of James. So we're going to finish it out. How about that? Good. Thank you. Uh, I'm glad you agree. Here we go. James chapter 2, verse 1. My brothers, my brothers. He's talking to church folk, which he tells us in chapter 1 to the 12 churches dispersed. Uh, he's talking to church people, uh, Christians. And uh, I'm glad he does because it's some good stuff in here. Show no partiality as you hold the faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory. You've probably never been to a church who showed partiality, but I have. For if a man wearing a gold ring and fine clothing comes into your assembly, and a poor man in shabby clothing also comes in, and you pay attention to the one who wears the fine clothing and say, you sit here in a good place while you say to the poor man, you stand over there or sit down at my feet, which is weird. Have you not then made distinctions? That's a big word. Have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Now, he's going to talk about judgmentalism uh, probably in chapter 4, I think it is. That's where I'm at in my study. Uh, we'll talk about what it is and what it isn't, all right? Uh, listen, my beloved brothers, has not God chosen those who are poor in the world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which he has promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor man, or not the rich, the ones who oppress you and the ones who drag you in the court, uh, that was happening at that time. They would take poor people, take everything they had. And so why are they wanting to give in to these rich people? Number one, either hopefully they'll get in good with them, they might give them something, or two, they won't take them to court, they won't do what they can do. A lot of reasons there. I'm not going to get stuck on that stump. Are they not the ones who blaspheme the honorable name by which you were called? If you really fulfill the raw, royal law according to scriptures, you will love your neighbors yourself, you're doing well. But if you show partiality... You're committing sin. Wow. Well, I hadn't heard that pretty stone. If you show partiality, you're committing sin or convicted by the law as a transgressor. Whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become guilty of it all. Whew. Glad I'm not under the law. How about you? Amen. For he said, do not commit adultery. He's also said, do not, commit, uh, do not murder because if you do not commit adultery but you do murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. You, you, Done messed it all up. So speak and so act as those who are to be judged under the law of liberty. For judgment is without mercy to the one who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. All right, let, let me roll. You, I think you cut me short on my time. In, in, in verse 5, he says, Listen, my beloved brothers, has not God chosen those who are in poor of the world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom, which he promised to those who love him? All right. God chose the poor in the world to be rich in faith. Uh, it is on the basis of grace. And I want to tell you right now, when God looks at a life, when he looks at you and I, I'll reiterate from last week, he looks at who we can be. God has created each and every one of us with a purpose. Right? God is like Bluebell. He has many flavors. He has created many different things and purposes to fulfill the role of the kingdom. If everybody was just like me, not a lot would get done. But there's people just like we, raised, we picked up our serve team this morning and said, look at these people, all fulfill a different role. We are a body. So when God looks at us, he doesn't look at where we are per se, but he also moves in our life to, uh, on the basis of who we can be. You see this in creation, the first, cre first man that was created. God created him from dirt, from dust. So God had to have the ability to look past the dirt and see a man. God had to have the ability to look past the dirt, come on, and see life and see potential. And when he looks at us today, and all of us has got dirt.
this is my honest section. I don't know what it's about over here, but both service, this is my honest section. Everybody on there in the chief seats, don't say nothing. I'll tell you if you don't know, we all got some dirt in our lives. Thank God, through his grace, he had the ability to look past who I was to who I could be, right? And so when he looks at people by his grace, uh, and he's telling us, quit, quit looking through the lens of uh, rich, poor, partiality, favoritism, all, all of those things. And we, we've tried to weed that out of Turning Point. We tried to squeeze that out. We, we, we tried to get, you know, talk enough to these people that they went to another church, that they look at somebody and say, what are they doing there? Or what's she doing here? Or what, you know, the reason they're here, right, is because there's a God who's full of grace, and maybe the Holy Spirit is working in their life, drawing them to him, that he has the ability to look past what we focus on. Is that all right? That wasn't in my notes. That was a good squirrel. That was a flying squirrel. Aren't you glad salvation is not on the basis of merit? Right? Grace is God's choice of those who cannot earn and do not deserve salvation. That's why he shifts to spiritually poor people. Right? That is someone who is totally dependent on someone else. Example, you and I, poor in spirit. Poor in spirit, could not pay, did nothing to earn salvation. I, I stood at the foot of the cross, and I had nothing to offer him. You have to understand this. We had a gentleman from Haiti here last week, first service, sat right over here. Uh, he, was, he was being very erratic, very erratic, grabbing the seats, beating the seats, screaming. We didn't know what was going on. In this day and time, that can mean a lot of things. So one of our safety went over and said, sir, what's, what's going on? And he said, I'm worshiping. And he was, had our seats. The seats were tore up. People, there was like, there was plenty of room around him. And so Pastor Brandon talked to him after church, said, hey, what's going on? He said, I worship hard so God will accept me and I can go to heaven. It's, it's in his culture. I, we, we have missionaries in Haiti and we do mission work there. It's in his culture. Right? That the harder, the louder, the more intense, some cultures, the more I cut myself, the more I ex ex exhibit pain on myself, God will accept me. Yeah. And Pastor Brandon could have stood there, and, and I preached this first part of this message talking about this, but it did not penetrate. Why? It did not penetrate past what he had been taught. And he could not understand that when we stood at the cross, and even to this day after salvation, we have nothing. We're poor. We're dependent. We're in need of. But we have become rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom. An heir is someone who gets something because of the relationship with someone who has died. Now, <laughs> I've had plenty of people die and they didn't leave me nothing. I don't know what's your family. You, must, you might have richer fruit, fruit in yours. Anyway, maybe they left me a good example of how to be a good man. How about that? An heir is someone, if you're, if you're an heir, okay, you get what's coming to you, number one, when they die, number two, because of the relationship we have with them, and number three, because of what they worked for and purchased. We are heirs, right, through Jesus Christ. We get what we get because of his death, our relationship with him, and what he paid. That's better than you're looking. Come on. Move on. I am going to finish this section today. So much, man, there's so many, like, they're running. They're running all over me right now, these squirrels. Just, <laughs> I, could, I could just go. James chapter 2, verse 8. If you really fulfill the royal law according to Scripture, you love your neighbor as yourself, you're doing well, but if you show partiality, golly, there's that word again, you're committing sin. Man, 
Convicted by the law is a transgressor of whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become guilty of it all. For he who said don't commit adultery also said don't murder. If you do not commit adultery but you do murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. What is all this talking about? First, what is the royal law? What is the royal law? Uh, well, Moses and Levit Leviticus, I think it's uh, 19, 18, somewhere in there. Uh, he reveals this law. He talks about this. He talks about this. But... Uh, Christ, Christ fulfills it. All right? he, Moses talks about Christ fulfills it. It, it said the two greatest commandments are, are this, love the Lord your God with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. Uh, now, we can get that mixed up because if I say, do you love yourself, you're going to go, you know what, I would love to shed, you know, 20. I don't love the way I look. By the way, all you guys that are newly married, Let me, just, let me just save you a pothole or two. If she ever says to these jeans, make me look fat, don't ever say it has nothing to do with the jeans. Okay? Just say no. That's not really, they're not fishing for an honest answer. That, I, I won't use that because my wife will be at second service. We love your neighbors yourself. Not many people, unless there's some kind of psychological, chemical imbalance, something's going on in your life, got up this morning and said, how much pain can I inflict on myself? How, how can I do me wrong? Uh, you did the best you could with what you got, and you, but why? Because you love yourself, right? You, you care about yourself. Uh, secondly, observing this law, hang with me, this law, this royal law, love your neighbor as yourself, makes us a king what do you mean because hatred makes us a slave somebody come to me the other day and said I'm really really trying to forgive I'm really working hard on forgiving this person I said you never will you never will well I'm really working on it what's going to change they're dead it was done what they did was done it's not going to be undone. It is what it is. The abuse is there. Right? You're a slave to a person, and this person's dead. You're a slave to a dead man. He controlled my life, and he's controlling it from the grave. Forgiveness, listen, it's not a feeling. It's not somewhere I get to. It's a choice. I forgive. I'm releasing, my, I'm releasing me. See, we think forgiveness is releasing them, and they're getting off easy. No, re re forgiveness is releasing me. Because, look, when they're, yeah. And, and it, hey, listen, listen, listen. It's, it's, it's a whole lot easier to sell it to you than smoke it myself. <laughs> it's not easy. Don't just think it's, oh, okay. No, it is a choice, and you have to continually work on that choice. Okay, because it pops back up. But unforgiveness, hatred makes us a slave. We're a slave, right? But love sets us free from that selfishness, that hatred, that unforgiveness. Love does. Now, loving my neighbor as myself doesn't mean that I'm now okay with their self-destruction or their actions. That's not what that means. Good thing God's, God doesn't love on that basis. He, he, he loves us the same way because he is love. We have to choose love, but he is love. If I love myself, right, when I get a bad report from the doctor, which he told me the other day, you got to cut sugar out. That's kind of like forgiveness. <laughs> I've done better, okay, but... I just, I didn't look at him and say, you know what, it just runs in my family. I really made a conscious effort, and I'm trying to change and make myself better, and I'm trying that, and he starts using things like, you're going to get diabetes, and then it's going to go in control, and you're not, all these, he gives me all these scenarios, and, and you're going to have to shoot yourself in your stomach with a needle, and I don't like needles, and he starts talking those kind of terms. I'm like, you know, I think we, we can probably work on this, uh, but but. If I love myself, when I get that report, I'm not going to say, oh, well, 
You know, if you don't change, it's going to die. Oh, well, I have faith. I go to church. Loving others as myself means right there. And we're going to talk about this in, in, in depth because it gets into depth in chapter 4. But that means if I love you as myself, I'm not going to be okay with your self-destruction. I'm not going to be okay with you walking off a cliff and destroying your life. Why? I love you. Come on, you ever had a teenager? The reason I'm telling you about this dude, it's because I love you. He's a thug, a jerk, and he's after one thing, right? And that ain't your last name. I love you. That's why you're not going over there. Everybody else is. Well, I love you, and the answer is no. You don't love me. If I didn't love you, I'd let you go there. But I know what's going on, right? I know they're saying they got a pinata, but there's more than a, What's in that pinata? I know it's in the pinata. It ain't candy. Move on. If, listen, People think that if I love you as myself and I push you and I see your potential, I got people that do that, that in my life, and, and the new word is, you're judging me. No, you know, I'm not judging you. I will talk about this. No, I love you. Okay? Christ-like love does not leave the person where it found them. Jesus loves us just the way we are, but he has a plan and a purpose for us, and he will not leave us where he finds us. It should help the poor, the rich man, Strive to be everything that Christ, right, has for them. Love builds up. Hatred tears down. Verse 12. Hurry. Oh, I'm good. So speak and act of those who are judged under the law of liberty, for judgment is without mercy. Mercy to the one who shows, has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Oh, yes, it does. It's important to keep this in context. We're going to keep this in context. What James has been talking about. In this chapter, James is dealing with favoritism. He's dealing with uh, some believers were showing to people because of their status, of what they had. And they walked in, and they're like, man, if I'm just getting good with him. And he's saying, look, Christ is enough. He, he can fulfill the needs that you're also trying to get in good with this rich man. So put your faith in him and not this man. All right. Some in the church were looking at favoritism as a lesser sin. We talked about this last week as a lesser sin, but he talked about the partiality, sin of partiality. James points out in verses 10 and 11 that sin, any sin, any sin, any sin, constitutes breaking the entire law that God has for his people. Boy, that would put some things in perspective, wouldn't it? You know, we, we have the big ones in church. Don't smoke, don't dip. Don't chew, don't drink, don't date girls that do. Uh, you know, that's your go-to ones. And you don't have Bible for half of that, but we, we forget about partiality. There's going to be a lot of people that stand, and I'll talk about this in a minute, who are saved. We're going to stand before the Lord, and, and, he, and they're going to have perfectly white teeth with no dip stains, no yellow fingers. Right, not the smell of liquor, and they were at church every time. And he's gonna, and they're gonna be ready, and he's gonna go. You know what? I gotta talk to you about something. You sinned. You're sinning. Oh, I'm not. No. You remember those people that walked in? And you said, "What are they doing here?" And you shunned them. Remember that? And you got up and you moved. Yeah, but Lord, they didn't smell good. Yeah, Lord, but I don't know that they have a place here. Any, anybody out here today? Matter of fact, there's people watching online that won't step foot in the church because of their last experience like that. And so this is safe right here. Unless Turning Point's been your first church, you've probably had a good experience because we, we believe in that. We, we believe that everybody stands on equal ground at the cross, okay? 
but there's people who are watching online who will not step foot. I just had this conversation before church, who will not step foot in a church now because of past experience in church. Right? Nobody slapped them upside the head. Nobody drug them down the aisle. They were just, they showed partiality and favoritism when Christ created them for a reason. Quiet in here. Verse 12, so speak and act as though that shall be judged by the law of liberty. What is the law of liberty? The gospel. Aren't you glad you're free? Yeah. It is a declaration, listen to me, of righteousness and salvation by Christ. The gospel, what he did is death, burial, and resurrection is a declaration to us of righteousness. Right? And salvation by Christ, a pardon from our sentence of guilty, a pardon. He didn't say you're not guilty. He says you are guilty, but I pardon you. And therefore, eternal life through him. So speak and act as those that will be judged by the law of liberty. So we should speak and act to others in the same light and understanding of what Christ has done for us. Being that he gave us something, we could not give ourselves because we, we were poor in spirit. We had no hand in the payment for our sins. We stood on equal ground with everybody else. So since Jesus is dealing with the sin of partiality in the church, he is reminding us to act because he's talking to church folk. I read a quote from one atheist. He said, I'd have been a Christian a long time ago had it not been for Christians. He is reminding us to act in the light of the fact that Jesus didn't show favoritism on the cross. His salvation is for whosoever will. Let him and come drink of the waters of life. How much? Freely. Free. Verse 13. For judgment is without mercy to the one who shows, has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Now, golly, put myself in the corner again time-wise. Let's keep in context, all right? He's talking about how to maintain a Christ-like relationship with others. James is writing to the church who are already saved. He's letting them know that favoritism is not a lesser sin because there's no such thing as a lesser sin, okay? And in verse 13, he's telling us, since God will judge us with mercy, right? Mercy will be involved. I'm going to explain this. We should show others mercy. Being merciful is an act by us that shows our thankfulness for all that God has done for us by the indwelling of the Spirit and by what Jesus did on the cross. Showing mercy to others, right, is in a reaction and an understanding of what has been done for us. This does not mean that we earn mercy by showing mercy. It's not what he's talking about. I'm explaining this. You don't earn mercy by showing mercy. It, it almost sounds like that because it's impossible to earn mercy. If it's earned, it's not mercy, it's payment. Again, nor does it mean we should be soft on sin and never call it out in the life of others. It's not what I'm talking about either because if you love someone, right? If you love someone, I'm not going to let you crash head on. So what is mercy? Which, by the way, we're saved by grace. Right? We're saved by grace, not by work. We're not saved by mercy, we're saved by grace. What's the difference? Grace is God giving us what we didn't earn or deserve. What, what, what did he give us that we didn't earn or deserve? Salvation, forgiveness, righteousness. We didn't earn or deserve that. You, you do know that, right? But he gave us to us. Why? Through grace. Mercy is God doesn't give us what we do deserve. Judgment, wrath, punishment. Okay? He withheld that. We deserved it. He withheld it. So in light of this, let's put 12, 13 uh, in language we can get. Here it is. Talk and act like a person who is expecting to be judged by the rule, the gospel that sets us free. Talk and act like a person, right? I'm going to be judged according to that because we all stood before God poor spiritually with nothing to pay our debt, but God by his grace showed us mercy. He didn't give us what we did deserve, that's mercy, but rather gave us just the opposite, grace. Therefore, with this in mind, knowing what has been done for you, 
It should cause you not to judge people by what you see, rich or poor. Now, I'm, I'm not going to get in this, and I so want to, but I don't have time. I promise you I will on what judgment is. You should not step up and play the judge when by God's grace he showed you mercy. Because if you don't show mercy, you're clueless as to what God did for you. Therefore, how can you expect to be shown mercy, not grace? Mercy. Because according, listen, I'm going to, ah, stop the clock. Stop the clock. There's people in here that want their ice cream. How is it when you're trying to page this stuff together? Here we go. Not far enough. Oh, here, yeah. According to the grace of God given to me, like a skilled master, this is 1 Corinthians 3, 10. Like a master builder, I laid a foundation, and someone is building upon it. Paul talking. Let each one of you take care how he builds upon it, for no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Christ Jesus. He is our foundation, right? Your foundation, anything, your salvation is Jesus Christ. Are, are you with me here this morning? If you're a Christian, that is your, that's, that's, that's your, that's, if you don't have a foundation, you have nothing. Christ is our foundation. Now, if anyone builds on the foundation, I'll explain this to you, with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or straw. See, he goes from gold, silver, things that are tough, durable, eternal, and then we go to wood, hay, straw. Each one's work, please, please hang with me, and I know I'm throwing some of you a curveball, and you're going to get won't be able to eat your ice cream, but each one's work will become manifest for the day. What day? The day will disclose it. Now, the great white throne of judgment is not for Christians. The judgment seat of Christ is for Christians. There's two judgments, if you didn't know that. All right. The judgment seat of Christ, people, we, we've already been, our sins have already been judged because if you've put your faith in Jesus Christ, you're, you're, you're bueno, man. Good. But, but, for the day will disclose it. What's going to happen on the day of the judgment seat of Christ? Christians will stand before him, and something will be judged in us, not our salvation. Not our salvation. Because it will be revealed by fire. The fire what is the fire? The fire of God judging the fire of nothing is withheld from him. The fire just exposes everything, Right? Uh, the fire will test what sort of work each one has done. If the work that anyone has built on the foundation survives, he will receive a reward. Please, please track with me. If anyone's work is burned up, he will suffer loss, though he himself will be saved. Right? But only, through, uh, uh, only as through fire. All right, here it is. Here it is. Our works, your works, my works. I told our dream team this morning, right? Salva He's not dealing with salvation here. Not dealing with salvation. He's talking to the church. That these people are they're Christians. It's not what he's dealing with. Okay, what he is dealing with are works because in this, work, in this sense, they were talking about how they treated people. But it can go way across the board because one day we're going to stand before God and our works will be tried, whether they're... Gold, silver, precious stones, or hay, wood, stubble. Now, I, I, I know you're a smart crowd. You're here early. How many of you know gold, all these other things, will withstand more than wood, straw, or... Right, right. Uh, what this means is, our works we tried, did they have eternal value or not eternal value? Was it all about now? All about now. And I talked to our dream team this morning. These people are making eternal value just right here on a Sunday morning. There, there, there's people who come to Christ for the littlest thing that you do. Maybe it's a smile out there that somebody just, just said, and you, and you tore their wall down. They come in, they receive the gospel and gave their life to Jesus. I don't know what part you play, but there's people, your, your works are going to be judged. How did you treat others? Here's the kicker. All right? If 
your works are burned up, which means there was no eternal value. All right? You put your faith in Christ. He's talking to Christians here. He's talking to the church at Corinth. You, you yourself will be saved. But you're going to lose your reward. What is that? I don't know. I don't know what that reward is. In Revelation, he says Jesus is coming and his reward is with him. I don't know. But I did tell our dream team this morning, I promise you his reward's better than what we're giving you today, a free ice cream. <laughs> and it's important enough that they got to talk about this. It must be something to this. All right? So he's not talking about salvation here. Uh, you know, if you don't show mercy, which means we treated others the opposite of how Christ treated us, he won't show us mercy on that day. Not grace. It's not dealing with grace. He will give us our rewards based on how we rewarded others and what we did to others while here on earth. Nor is James 12, 13 salvation scriptures. They're not, they're, 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 they're not dealing with grace. I'm not going to show you grace. I'm gonna, no, that's been taken care of if you're here. I'm not going to show you mercy. They're dealing with mercy. You let the poor in your church, but you told them to sit in the back and not participate. You called the dude with the Ferrari up front. And the guy that walked in, you said, get in the back. Or you treated people in your personal life. Not in the light and the mercy that he showed you. And when you stand before him on that day, right? You've done being shown grace and you're saved by grace, not by works. It is a gift from God, right? It's a gift from God through faith, through faith, through faith. Not beating on a chair, not tearing a chair up, not hitting the floor, not screaming to the top of your lungs. Faith in what he did. I hope you're getting this today. When you stand before him, then he's going to talk to us about our works. And we're either going to get the reward, not going to heaven. He said that the man's going to be saved. All right? But the reward, based on, hear me, based on what you do here as a Christian. Well, I went to church, and I'm just sitting, waiting for the rapture. You don't get the reward. I don't know what that is. It's got to be good. I, by my grace, Jesus said, will let you into heaven, but I'll show you the same mercy that you showed and extended to the poor physically and spiritually. Hey, you can come in. You, you can come in, but sit, sit back there. And Jesus is going to say, yeah, you can come in heaven, but sit back there. Hey, yeah, you can come in, but you can't participate. Grace got me in, but Jesus is going to say, yeah, that's the way you lived your life. Welcome into heaven, but you, you, you go over there. Or you get this or don't get this. I don't, I don't know what it is. Some people says it's crowns, jewels on your crowns. I don't know. I don't know, but it's, it's got to be good. Right? Somebody said, well, I don't care as long as I'm in heaven. <laughs> you know what I mean? Shoot, as long as I'm in heaven, man. I made it. Woo! Somebody said, I don't care if it's got dirt roads and a picket fence. As long as I'm in. There's something to this. It's better than we know. And by the way, mercy triumphs over judgment. Amen. Let's stand.
Father, have we become so familiar with the cross that it doesn't move us anymore? Have we come? Have we heard it so much that it has no effect? Have we forgot who we were? That we were poor? Had nothing to offer? You extended your grace to us. You gave us something we didn't deserve. Forgiveness, righteousness, salvation. Have we, have we taken your grace and then not shown others mercy because thank God you didn't give us what we did deserve, but are, are, are we have we got this backwards now in, 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 as Christians to who James is talking to? And, and Are we showing partiality, forgetting who we are? Forgetting what you did for us? Have we forgotten the power and the validity of the cross, the gospel, the law of liberty, that you have set us free And we had no hand in it. We. What? Well, that puts us on a different level. And I'm going to stand before you one day as a Christian. My works will be judged whether they're hay. Are they gold, silver, precious stones? Or were they hay and stubble and wood? Did, 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 was there no eternal value? There was no lasting. This, my, my works here. Is, Lord, I won't. I, I, I'm thankful for heaven. For that reward you got. In, in light of what you did for me, I need to do for others. Right? Because I want that well done. Hey, well done. Well done. I didn't bury my gift. I did something with it. I didn't bury that talent. I did something with it. Right? I, I pray for Turning Point Church. I pray for those who are listening. That we'd never lose sight of the grace and the mercy that you have shown us. Right? We all deserve destruction and punishment, but you didn't give it to us. But you gave me what I didn't deserve simply through faith in what you did. Let us search our hearts today. Let us remove all partiality and favoritism and superiority that thinks we have a right to say who can and cannot be a part of the church of the living God, the body of Christ. We have no place. Instead, let us love others as we love ourselves and do for others as we do for ourselves. We thank you today, Jesus. We thank you today, Jesus. For the gospel, the cross, thank you today, Jesus. We are who we are because you did what you did. Thank you, Jesus. It's in your name we pray. Everybody say amen.